بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد being angry and controlling our anger is one of the incredibly important characteristics that a Muslim must possess. A Muslim should strive to possess the ability to control his or her anger. And this is in accordance with the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the pious predecessors, meaning the Salaf al-Saleh radiyallahu ta'anhum majma'een, beginning with the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. In a hadith which is well known in the Ummah, which was narrated in Bukhari, an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu أن رجلا قال للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أوصيني قال لا تغضب فردد مرارا قال لا تغضب رواه بخاري In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which illustrates for us the topic which we're discussing, which is controlling our anger. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said is narrated by Abu Huraira anhu, who said that a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, advise me or give me nasiha, give me advice, give me guidance. Thing and the scholars they explain that this guidance is those affairs which will benefit us in the dunya and the akhirah. That's what's meant by guidance and the nasiha that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in that they asked about. So this man was asking, he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Usini, you know, advise me. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, with his prophetic wisdom, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, do not become angry. He ordered, he said, La taghdab. He said, don't become angry. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he repeated it several times. He said, La taghdab. And then it was, this was narrated in, or collected in Bukhari. In this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it illustrates for us the importance of controlling our anger. And the importance of restraining ourselves. Because it is within it is a part of our nature to become angry and to become disturbed by many of the things that we encounter in our life when things don't go our way, when people anger us, when people bother us, when people disturb us, when people speak ill of us, when people backbite us, when people have ghiba and namima. All of these things cause us to be angry. So we have to look at, is that anger for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we're going to uh, talk about, or is that anger in order to defend ourselves and to defend our our own uh, position and, and so forth? And it is permissible to defend your honor, of course, because those are some of the things that are important to the Muslim. The Muslim's honor, the Muslim's uh, property, the Muslim's family, and the Muslim's, uh, you know, the, your your soul and your your all of those things that Islam protects and preserves through the Sharia, through Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's divine law, Subhanahu wa Taala. So. Restraining ourselves, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, this was in the the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, ordered this. This was an order from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. La taqdab, do not become angry. This was a part of his prophetic advice, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is because due to the fact that some of the types of anger, there is of course the natural anger, the anger that we all 
uh, experience from different things that we encounter in our, our daily lives. We become angry. It's, it's a, a natural disposition that we all uh, face. And we are aware of the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, which shows us that also the shaitan is in our blood. The shaitan, the shaitan runs through the, you know, goes through the veins of the children of Adam. That the shaitan is with us. There's always a shaitan with us. So we have to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan. And we have to seek, seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what the shaitan orders, is, orders us to and commands us to and inclines us to. And of course, one of those things being anger. And anger leads to many types of destruction and many types of uh, false and evil characteristics. So the Prophet Sallallahu ordered him several times, three times Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to not become angry. Anger, as we mentioned, is, can be, uh, there's a natural form of anger, a natural state. There's also another form of anger which is divided into two types. The type in which is Mamdur, meaning that it is, or, or that it's Mahmud, that it is a praiseworthy type of anger. Let's talk about the praiseworthy type of anger first. The praiseworthy or good anger is the anger وَهُوَ غَضَبْ الْغَضَبْ لِلَّهِ عِنْدَ الْإِنْتِهَاقِ مُحَارَمُهُ كَمَا كَانَ يَفْعَلُهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِأَنَّهُ غِيرَ عَلَى دِينِ اللَّهِ وَقَهْرٌ لِعَدْ أعدائه تعالى والدفاع عن الدين وحب لله تعالى والبغض لغير الله وبذل النفس لله تعالى So the first type, which is a praiseworthy type of anger, is when a person is angry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're angry when they see people transgress the bounds. For example, maybe a person uh, that you know, you see someone, you see them they're a Muslim and you see that they're drinking alcohol or you see that they're smoking cigarettes or you see that they're doing uh, I illegal drugs or you see that they're, they're harming people or they're, sp they're backbiting or they're speaking about people's uh, character. They're slandering people. They are criticizing people uh, without the right to do so. This kind of anger a person who becomes angry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sharia is being violated, then this person has done something praiseworthy, something good, because they're angry for the sake of Allah. They hate uh, that the person is drinking alcohol. They hate that the person is smoking cigarette. They hate that the person is doing... Uh, bad things, things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. So they are angry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the type of ghira and the type of uh, jealousy that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had for the religion of Allah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sharia. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa became angry when the people violated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law. At the same time, he was the most merciful amongst us. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a rahma, a rahma, a rahma, til, rahma lil alameen. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a mercy for all of mankind. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And even w him being so merciful, he still had anger. He a was angry and became angry when the people violated the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they were disrespectful to one another. When they trampled on one another's honor. When they harmed one another and hurt one another. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that kind of ghira, that kind of anger is permissible. The second type of anger is the sinful or mithmum type. And this anger is an anger for one's own, uh, for reasons of desire. Or reasons, you know, maybe a person is jealous. Or some other affair in the dunya. You know, those, those affairs that don't pertain to the religion. Some people, they become angry because they see someone else getting something good. You know, so they have hasid. They want to take away their ni'mah and they want to gain the, the ni'mah. They want to gain that blessing. So they're angry about it. They're angry. In fact, they become angry at the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is uh, a great sin. And some people, they become angry for things that are harmful. Maybe they didn't attain uh, 
something haram, something they were trying to do that was unlawful, they actually didn't attain it. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Or they are uh, refusing to pardon and you know, refusing to pardon people for their their transgressions against them, or some something harmful uh, against their body, or they are cursing people, and uh, as we mentioned, uh, harming one another, another's honor, and having hasid and having uh, envy towards one another. All of those things the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited us from. Also, sometimes people they become so angry that they lose their their aql meaning their their intelligence or their their state of being uh they become almost as if they are crazy or a type of insanity because they're so angry some people they don't know how to control themselves and this is what we have to stay away from some of the ways in which we can uh, that are an ilaj or a means for dealing with anger and 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 preventing oneself and dealing with anger is number one seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan this is the first way so the first way that we can begin whenever we be begin to become angry especially for something related to the dunya related to this uh, to this life petty things that may not be so important in the scale of things but to us it may cause us to be anger uh, angry the first thing we need to do when you become angry is you seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan the accursed shaitan the second thing in order to control that anger is that you have to strive mujahid to nafs that you have to strive in order to uh, prevent your your yourself to control yourself from the anger uh, which can cause you to be out of control and the third way in which we can deal with this anger anger <clears throat> is by pardoning people by pardoning people who have maybe even uh, taken your rights or maybe have uh, violated your your honor or your character so pardoning people having that characteristic of being uh, a person of of, of of forgiveness and mercy this can also be a, w a means for dealing with anger another way in which we deal with anger is that if you're standing, then you should sit, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And if you are uh, sitting, then you should lay down. So this is from prophetic guidance, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on how to deal with anger, how to deal and control yourself in those situations. Another, which w another way in which we can uh, control our anger and deal with it and... Uh, Pure ourselves, purify ourselves from it, from it, is by avoiding those things which cause us to be angry. And if you are already becoming angry about something, then to move away from that. For example, if you are in a situation and someone is angering you, then in those situations, then it is best to leave. You might find that it's more, there might be more maslaha for you to just leave that situation before you lose control of yourself and it becomes a situation out of control. Uh, another way in which we can deal with the anger is and is those are those are some of the main ways in which we can deal with the anger so that way in order to prevent ourselves from uh, moving on to violence to moving on to cursing one another to moving on to just pure hatred and envy of one another so the Prophet Sallallahu in that hadith he repeated to that advice several times uh, in some narrations uh, three times so it shows us the importance of anger. He didn't say, do not become angry and do this and do that. But rather, he repeated, do not become angry, emphasizing for us the importance of avoiding that uh, characteristic. Some of the benefits we gain from this hadith, the hadith has many benefits, as the scholars um, they illustrate for us. One of the benefits is the harus sahaba ala talib al ilm that it shows for it illustrates for us how the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in how they were uh, striving 
to seek knowledge. They strove in order to benefit themselves and seek knowledge about the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they could better practice the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not so that they could say they were people of knowledge. And this is something that we have to strive to do because unfortunately this sickness uh, is widespread. The second benefit from this hadith is as this hadith illustrates for us the fadl Majalis al ilm. It shows us the benefit of sitting in gatherings of the scholars. You know, because the Prophet ﷺ was asked, and who was the, the most uh, knowledgeable? Who is, who, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is the most knowledgeable about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The, the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst mankind is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, they sought knowledge from him. They sought advice from him. The same which way, the same way in which we should seek advice from the scholars. And if we're not in a situation to be able to ask the scholars, then ask those students of knowledge, those people who are in our communities who can benefit us with that beautiful, uh, advice which comes from the prophetic guidance, the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another benefit from this hadith is that one of the ways in which we attain knowledge is by asking, is by questions. Another benefit of this hadith is that the Prophet wasallam was blessed with what they call Jawami' Akalim. That the Prophet wasallam was blessed in that he could say few words that had immense wisdom and meaning and benefit for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had so much to offer us if we just follow his sunnah. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is that the uh, this hadith illustrates for us the obligation of avoiding uh, be, being angry. Another benefit of this, uh, especially avoiding uh, being angry related to the dunya, related to this worldly life, the things in this life. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith illustrates for us the importance of being patient. The fadl of sabr. Another benefit of this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is this hadith illustrates for us the importance of repeating beneficial advice, that you may repeat that advice many times, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked that one time, but he gave advice more than once. He said, La Taghdab, La Taghdab, La Taghdab. He advised Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to not become angry. So that shows us from the prophetic sunnah uh, that it is also to repeat the advice to someone in order to encourage them uh, to good and exhort them to good. Another benefit of this hadith is that it shows us that the shaitan uh, runs through the blood of the children of Adam. That we all have a shaitan with us that we must fight constantly. The shaitan is always whispering to us to do sins, to go to the club, to drink alcohol, to commit zina, to do, uh, to become angry, to harm one another, to trample on each other's honor, to spread ghiba and namima, to talk about this one, to belittle that one, to steal from this one. The shaitan is haris. Alabani Adam, the shaitan is ever uh, encouraging us to do evil. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also illustrates for us or encourages us to try to fight our anger and control our anger and to control our nafs by what we eat, what we put into our body, what we drink, what we watch, what we do, what we speak about. All of those things uh, are a part of controlling your nafs, controlling those things which you are inclined to, especially those things which have to do with your desires and, and encourage you to do evil. So. Uh, Islam encourages us, and this hadith is an illustration for us and shows us the importance of avoiding those kind of uh, those things which encourage us to do evil and bad. And this is also from the guidance of the Prophet wasallam and what Islam calls us to. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.